This is the all-new Longer Nano Duo, a portable dual-powered laser that lets you engrave on wood, on metal, and a host of other materials. So in this video, I want to show you four important things you need to know if you're considering adding one of these to your life. And I'll tell you right now, number four blew me away. I got the Longer shirt on, so let's get started. Longer's been making lasers and 3D printers since 2016. And I've reviewed all of their lasers on this channel, as well as one of their 3D printers. And while there were a few issues in the early days, uh, Longer has been diligently listening to all of us, and they've continued to improve and build better and better lasers. Now, they've taken all of this knowledge and experience, and last year they released the Longer Nano, which is a portable laser, and I liked it a lot, actually. However, there was one key area where it was lacking a bit, and that was in power. At only a maximum of 12 watts of blue light power, it was going to be relegated to the hobbyist market. However, Longer's taken all of this knowledge that they've gained from the Nano experience, plus all of their previous lasers, and they've used all of that to create this new and improved Longer Nano Duo, which is a tiny powerhouse laser that is still going to be loved by hobbyists, mostly because of the price but also people who have side hustles and small businesses are going to be able to take advantage of this laser and all of its new capabilities. So let's start with a quick look at some of the specifications and features. 20 watt diode laser and a two watt IR laser built into the same box, 10,000 millimeters a second, so it's very fast. And it's also very precise at 0 0.00, let's call it two millimeters of accuracy. It has a built-in camera and there's 250 five points of accuracy on the bed that gives you the ability to auto focus and auto position as well as make sure that you have edge to edge sharpness that's always a problem with galvos uh, on the workspace side 160 by 140 is the default but you can get an xy axis for this that expands everything out to 300 by 300 and there's also a conveyor option available if you want to do volume now in the previous version of the nano the the red shield got in the way and it was always, you couldn't put it on when the laser was focused. They've solved all of those problems here. It's, it's better. It's still going to get in the way sometimes, but it's not going to be nearly as problematic as it was on the original Nano. Now there's also a top mount display where you can control the entire laser. Uh, it, it's the place where you're going to go initially to connect to your Wi-Fi network. And that's normally the way you would use this laser because it's, it's faster, but you can also connect using a USB connector. And you would want to do that if you want access to the built-in camera for framing, or if you want to connect to something like Lightburn or laser gerbil. From here, you can also do firmware updates, and most importantly, uh, you can start and stop jobs right from the right from the, the laser. So you don't have to worry about going back to your computer to, to do any kind of you know operation that that will that needs to be done potentially in a hurry. Now, finally, here on on the the feature list is portability. This laser weighs very little. You can hold it in your hand. There's a nice handle on top. And you can take it off the stand and you can engrave on maybe a table if you're putting logos on things that you make or you could engrave on a wall or a crate if you're shipping things so very flexible from that regard as well all right let's talk about the software here and there's three different ways you can control this laser from software the first is laser gerbil now i'm not going to talk about that one because i don't actually know anyone who uses it but if you use it it's there I will talk about light burn integration because that one is certainly one that, that most people will use. Uh, now, on my pre-release version of this laser, I was only able to connect to, to light burn through Windows. I couldn't use my Mac. They're still working on some of the integration. And they did say they would have a Mac version of a, a better Mac version later on. So assume it's going to be there. Now, the, the, the light burn integration reduces the functionality somewhat, and we'll talk about some of the advanced functionality a bit later, but, but things like auto positioning and auto focus, you're just not gonna get in light burn, and that's more a function of light burn and some of the limitations there. So installing the Nano Duo is pretty basic. You just drop their provided device driver onto the workspace, and that will install the laser. And when you get that done, you can go to the console view and you'll see you have some extra buttons to select each of the laser types as well as enable engraving. And beyond that, you can just create a project like you normally would in Lightburn. 
uh, set the, uh, the settings for each of the layers and when you're happy you can send it over to the laser and it will do exactly what you expect and the Nano Duo uh, integration works really well. Longer also provides their own software called Laser Burn which is available on Windows not available on the Mac yet, but it's coming. And there's also a mobile phone version of it. So that allows you to do basic control of your laser. Now it's very easy to use. So if you're a beginner, you're probably gonna be a, you're probably gonna find this appealing. But if you are, have used Lightburn in the past, you're probably gonna pan this and stick with Lightburn. However, later on in this video, I'll show you reasons why you might want to look at laser burn uh, because it does enable some features that you won't get in Lightburn. Now, as far as getting this installed, I'm not going to cover how to install it because it's basically pretty simple, but, but I will show you uh, some basic operation here. So I've just created a, a, just a simple design with a piece of text and a piece of clip art that's available over on the, on the left-hand side here. And it's just my fake taxi company logo. And I've got two layers. The text is one layer and the tree is a separate layer. And I can go and frame this and you'll see framing here differs a bit from, from what you get in Lightburn. It's a very solid uh, rectangle. But when I'm ready to, to do the engrave, you can see I go through a whole bunch of, of pop-ups here and I'll talk about those as well. But once you, you get through all of that, you can go and push the start button on the laser and you'll get what you expect, which is the palm tree with the piece of text. And it looks really nice actually. So all in all, I think it's it's pretty simple to use laser burn, but it's depending on your use case, you may not be all that interested in it. So with laser burn and light burn set up on my computer, I decided to run a bunch of tests just to try some different materials. I also flipped between the IR laser and the diode laser, just so you could see the difference there as well. Now, one of the first things you're probably gonna try or, or you will eventually try is photo engraving. So here I just took a picture of a dog and put it on two metal business cards. The top one is the IR laser and the bottom one is the, is the blue laser. And you can see the top one is definitely crisper. So if you're using metal, you probably wanna use the IR laser. Now, when you get to wood, in this case plywood, uh, you can do an engraving with the blue laser and it came out fantastic cork you probably are also going to want to use the blue laser for that in this case i'm just engraving my company logo this is sped up i think 10 15 times but it was pretty quick to do and uh, it, it framed out really nicely i did this one actually in laser burn and just so you can see that it actually works and then i flipped over to light burn and and did my my company logo uh, on a slate coaster and again i used the blue laser for this and it came out fantastic. So basic engraving works really well. Now, if you wanna do something special, maybe you wanna do a deep emboss on something, uh, you can use this laser for that as well. So here I just took this skeleton and, and embossed it on a piece of cherry. And when you run your finger across this, you can actually see that it's very deep. And this is a really cool effect. Now, uh, footnote here, Longer recommends using beech wood for, for these engravings. Uh, I didn't have any, so I tried a couple of different materials, including plywood, and they all worked reasonably well. I just thought the cherry one looked the coolest, so, so that's why I showed that one. Now, there's one other feature. Now, I don't actually have it, which is the XY extension table. Uh, and what that allows you to do as far as capability goes is uh, if you have this attached to your laser, you get both X and Y movement, 300 millimeters in each direction. And what that allows you to do with the longer nano duo is you can actually do cutting as well as, as bigger engraving. So uh, consider that if you're actually buying one of these, uh, you probably want to consider that option as well. Artificial intelligence is everywhere these days and the Longer Nano Duo is no exception. So if you're running laser burn and you must run laser burn for everything I'm about to show you, uh, you can use the AI capabilities to do things like image generation. So you click that button on the left hand toolbar and bring it up and then you can just type text. And that's what I did to generate that skeleton. And you can see it there. And from there, I can just drop it onto my workspace and engrave it. It's pretty simple, brain dead simple, really. AI is also used for auto positioning. So I generated this image of a Chihuahua wearing a hat and sunglasses. 
and I put it on my workspace. Now, when I refresh my workspace to capture a camera image, you'll see I dropped a, a couple of dog tags here. And I'll just put my image down there and, and do some scaling and positioning just to get it right. And when I'm happy with that, I can go up to the, to the batch fill in the upper right corner, click that button, and it will fill automatically all of the, the things it detects. Now notice this one is upside down. Uh, this is a pre-release version of the software. I'm hoping that they fix this, but it really when that happens, you can just take it and turn it over and uh, and position it yourself manually. It's not perfect yet, but I'm pretty sure they'll get there. And uh, that's auto positioning. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this Longer Nano Duo. It's definitely a step up from the Longer Nano. And uh, I think if you need that portability, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with this laser. Uh, now, I love the fact that it has these two lasers, both the IR laser and the blue diode laser. That means you get great material support. So you can do pretty much any metal as well as uh, more acrylics but woods, leather, slate, you saw all the, the materials I did there. Uh, so I think, you know, it, it does expand your horizons quite a bit compared to either a diode laser or just a fiber laser, say. Uh, the portability is, is second to none. This is very light, and the fact that you can just grab it and, and put it on something and do an engrave, uh, I think, is, is a, a good use case for a certain group of people. Uh, the accessories are, are pretty good. Unfortunately, Longer didn't get them to me in time. Uh, I don't think they have the XY extension available yet, but it's coming. Uh, but that that gives you basically everything you would get with a 20 watt diode laser in a frame. You get 300 by 300 uh, ability to, to engrave as well as cut. Now, a couple things I didn't like so much. The size limitation without the XY extension might be a problem for some people at 160 by 140. But if you're doing what this laser I think was intended for, I think you're gonna be engraving logos on, on projects that you're selling or, or doing customization, maybe at, a, at a, a, a weekend fair of some sort. So I think you're gonna be happy there. Uh, the connectivity, uh, I. It wasn't a big issue, but I know some of this, I think, is the fact that my laser is definitely pre-release. So I had trouble connecting with my Mac. Uh, it just wasn't recognizing the USB port in Lightburn. I'm not sure why, but I did manage to have the camera working in Lightburn uh, that's built into this laser. Uh, and finally, uh, there's still some usability issues with particularly laser burn. Uh, you saw how many times I, hit the, I had to hit the confirm button just to start a job, and then I had to go over to the laser to push the start button. I think all of that's unnecessary. Uh, we all know that lasers are dangerous, and you have to put your glasses on and all those sorts of things. Telling me every single time I'm doing a job uh, isn't really that valuable. Uh, also, there's a you have to put an SD card in the laser, so that's why I was getting some additional uh, confirmations because I wasn't naming the file uh, that was getting put on the SD card. Uh, I think if your typical use case, you're not going to do that anyway, so they should just recognize that you haven't given uh, your file a name when you're starting the engrave and just ignore that message and assume the file is disposable. Anyway, all in all, I think uh, considering mine is pre-release, uh, I think there's lots of opportunity for you as a user to, to take advantage of this. I think there's also still some opportunity lingering for longer to do some updates, particularly on laser burn. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. Now, if you didn't see the original longer nano review, click up in the corner here, and that'll give you an opportunity to go and compare. And with that, I'll say, get out there, make your build, and I'll see you next time.